What is going on lads? It's Billy the Kid here and today I'm bringing you my thoughts on the recent release of Armored Kill. Now this was released on Tuesday if I am not mistaken but I was so busy with college work that I only managed to play the game on Wednesday. So I have not had a lot of time in uh, you know getting as much gameplay footage as I would like but I do have a lot for you today so the purpose of this commentary is to bring my thoughts on armored kill and its release in the gameplay you will be seeing all types of footage from all the maps uh, Bandar Desert, Albor's Mountains, Armored Shield and Death Valley and you'll be seeing a mixture of rush and conquest gameplay from all of those maps I also will be going on the AC-130 on my thoughts on it as well as the new tank destroyers and the rocket artillery. So, let's begin the commentary. So the first thing I want to say is, first off, this uh, expansion pack was really suited for PC gameplay rather than for console gameplay. And let me reiterate myself, I'm not saying that this uh, expansion pack didn't need to come out for console. I am very glad they brought it out for console. but. When this comes out for PC, I'm sure we'll be seeing a lot more exciting gameplay in terms of the battles that are going on between the two sides with the 64-man capability on PC. As uh, we're all aware, on console, it's 12v12, and I'm sure all of you guys are watching right now, you're all aware how um, very quiet the battlefield can become on Caspian Border and Operation Firestorm in times of trying to find somebody to kill. If you haven't tried any of the armored kill maps yet, you're going to see that it's uh, it's going to be a lot more quieter. Most of the times I see that uh, it goes from flag to flag, basically. It doesn't go to all the flags. So two sides will start engaging each other, say, on Bravo flag. Or most often, everybody goes to Charity flag on Conquest, as that is the AC-130 flag. So the team that captures C flag in Conquest um, will gain the ability to get in the AC-130. Now, as for the maps, uh, I think they did very well. I think they did uh, an awesome job on all the maps, from Bandar to Albors to Armored Shield to Death Valley. I don't see any problems with, like, you know, glitches or bugs or bottlenecks. The only thing I have, maybe, uh, you know, a little, you know, where they think they should have done better is Albor's Mountains on Rush. Now the last base on Albor's Mountains is a bottleneck. There are really only two or three ways in. There's two roads that lead up to the top of the mountain where there's a big radar station like in uh, Damavan Peak, the first base. You'll see that. Now there are only two roads in but with the AC-130 you can power drop in behind them so if I had to suggest a way of getting past them I would say parachute out of the AC-130, get behind them, and then have all your team, have all your squad mates spawn. That's really, if it's a very good team defending. Now, as for, like I said, with the maps, I have no grievances with the maps. I think they're very, very big, which is fantastic because I like big maps. Um, uh, I can just, you know, <laughs> I can't wait to see the PC gameplay from lads like D. Crew Colin and, and uh, Rival X Factor when it does come out for PC because it's going to be very exciting. As for uh, Rush and Conquest modes, um, if you want the infantry attack you know, gameplay, go for Rush. If you want vehicle destruction mayhem, go for Conquest. It seems to me that um, defending on Rush is extremely tough and it's no more apparent for defenders trying to defend the objective in Rush than on Armored Shield. I swear I have a major problem with Armored Shield as the defenders, as I'm sure some of you are now aware of, but if you haven't played Armored Kill yet on console, be wary of Armored Shield in defense. Um, it's nearly impossible. I'll tell you why. The attackers get an AC-130, they get an uh, A-10, they get an attack helicopter, they get at least three um, MGS strikers and I believe they get uh, Amtrak as well. Now all of that paid against the defenders who only have an attack helicopter, an SU-25 and I think one tank? Maybe I'm wrong. 
I haven't played a lot on defense as you you can understand but all the way through it's nearly impossible to defend on armor shield unless your defending team is a Chuck Norris John Rambo hyper team that can just easily take down everything but most times it's it's a walkover so I hope dice corrects that um, it's very very hard to defend on armor shield but all that against you now the AC-130 is in rush uh, for the attacking team. Now, I do have a slight problem. I'm not saying now, as I'll go into the AC-130 in more detail as the comedy goes on, but I just wish that if it is going to be in rush, that they would limit how, how much it is in rush. For example, um, the defending team has, has a lot to deal with already, with the enemy armor and enemy infantry and the enemy jet, the A-10, coming in. And now they have the AC-130 to deal with. So if I had a choice, I would say limit the AC-130. Say for instance, they get three AC-130s per base. If those AC, if the AC-130 is destroyed three times, then they don't get any more until either they take the base or the defenders win. That's just my opinion. Let me know what you lads think. I, I think it's just a little bit too much. Now, as for the AC-130 itself, I think it is a good um, induction into the game. I think it's a very good thing. I don't think it's overpowered in any way. Uh, you know, the AC-130 has either a 25mm or 30mm cannon, as well as a 105mm tank gun. So it does a lot of damage. So when you spawn in as, as a defender, 9 times out of 10, you're going to see like 10 engineers with stingers trying to take this thing down. Um, uh, it's not... I wouldn't say it's easy to destroy, but it's it's pretty okay to destroy, if that makes any sense. I'm not saying it's a, I'm not saying it's like a, a bullet magnet or more or less invincible. You can easily take down with teamwork the AC-130 within 30 seconds, if you were working together. Maybe three engineers with Igles, one support guy to re resupply him, and you can take easily an AC-130. Like I said, I hope they limit the AC-130 to maybe 3 or 4 vehicles per MCOM stations. That would be a good in introduction, because at the moment it's a bit overkill. Anyway, uh, the AC-130, as I said, I don't think it's overpowered. I have had the opportunity to play in the AC-130, as the footage you will see now shows. And I think it's a good introduction, but, like I said, I wish they limited how many you get in the game. But that's for another commentary. As for the rocket vehicles, the rocket artillery, I only managed to get in the rocket artillery once. And I only got one lucky kill. And if I had to suggest a setup, I would say you get in the rocket artillery and your friend, who you're communicating with, you have to be in communication as always, uh, choose the recon class with an MAV. And he will spot targets for you to attack and he'll say uh, you're aiming too high, lower a bit down and you'll hit him. That is an excellent setup. He'll act as a spotter for the artillery vehicle and he will adjust your fire as, um, as you know, he, as he'll see it, you know. Uh, that way you'll get more kills, more hit markers, etc, etc. Now, as for the tank destroyers, I believe they're also a good addition. Uh, they are, as the name suggests, tank destroyers and you get a few good unlocks. You get um, a bigger high explosive round. I don't believe I've unlocked that yet. Uh, you get a coax machine gun. Now the best thing I think about the tank destroyers is their role in between a tank and a armored personnel carrier. As your friends can get in and then like in the LAV fire a machine gun out the side. But the best thing is two of the machine guns are uh, angled at the front. So it's like having if you have the coax selected as your secondary, that's three machine guns all pointed somewhere around the front area of the tank. So, the, And you get machine guns on, on the side that can also cover near enough the back. But I think it's the rear that you will have to go for if you're an engineer trying to take an, uh, a tank destroyer down as the machine guns are not covered near the rear. So that's the uh, tip I have for you engineers with RPGs be mindful of the MG, uh, the excuse me, the tank destroyers. I was about to say MGS, which is the American tank destroyer, and the Sprut is the Russian tank destroyer. So if you're trying to go after a tank destroyer, hit the rear, as it'll do the most damage, and it's not covered by the uh, 
passenger machine guns if he is carrying any passengers. Um, as for the vehicles themselves, I think they're a good introduction to the game. They will uh, no, no doubt like be a very valuable asset to the attackers or the defenders, so make sure you repair a damaged tank destroyer if you see one, if you're an engineer and you have the repair tool equipped. Now, for the quad bikes, oh man, it was so much fun playing on the quad bikes. So many vibes from Bad Company just came rushing back to me. And I have been C4'd while I was in the tank destroyer by someone who C4'd the uh, quad bikes. And I knew that was going to happen. I knew from day one when I heard quad bikes were going to be introduced, someone's going to C4 that quad bike and somebody's going to ram it into a ram it into a, a tank destroyer and I, I I had no bad feelings when I had that happen to me I didn't say it you you <laughs> you son of a <laughs> I knew that was gonna happen I was like glad it happened because that's what they're supposed to do you know they're not only supposed to be used as transport vehicles but you can also have so much fun I mean these things are like rockets they go super fast and they're very if you lose control there's no real way of controlling it. I mean, you turn too hard and it'll just take off. It will just go a mile up a mountain, like on all those mountains. But they are very useful for outflanking the enemy. I mean, these maps are huge. Very, very big. So you can easily outflank and get behind the enemy. And you have the capability, of course, from the trailers and from Fudge of uh, carrying a passenger who can act as a, uh, you know, to cover your back as your passing say a tank or for example I've had one guy on a sub on the back who was a support class and he was throwing C4 uh, near a tank destroyer and then we sped off and blew up so that's an interesting setup for the uh, quad bikes but like I said I'm having a lot of fun with the quad bikes um, other than that I suppose armor kill is a very very good um, setup for the game I really like it it's uh, a nice new change for the game some people won't like it, uh, those people who prefer like close quarters action will most likely not like Armored Kill and they will stick with close quarters and the vanilla battlefield maps. But for those who love tank destroyers and big maps and AC-130s and jets and rocket artilleries and of course the quad bikes, you will love Armored Kill. And this commentary is wrapping up. I hope you enjoyed the gameplay. I hope you enjoyed the commentary. Please feel to comment, rate, and subscribe for more Armor Kill. And please leave a comment in the comment section below what you would wish to see from Armor Kill from me. So, lads, this is Billy the Kid. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, rate, and subscribe once again. And I thank you very much for watching. Peace out.